Numbers 31. Is Moses dead yet? No. And he still won't be by the time we're done with this chapter. That's because he needs to make sure the Midianites are murdered. In a book full of gruesome, unjustifiable cruelty, this is one of the worst. The Lord said to Moses, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the Israelites. After that, you will be gathered to your people. I need you to kill off an entire group of people. Then it's your turn. Obviously, the question is, what did the Midianites do to deserve this random act of violence? And the answer is that in Numbers 25, an Israelite man got it on with a Midianite woman. It was basically intertribal romance. And God's not a fan. In fact, that happened while God was threatening to punish the Israelites for getting it on with the Moabite women. That's why when the Israelite and the Midianite went inside of a tent, one of the Israelites followed them and stabbed them both with a javelin. And then God said to Moses, treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them. Which is a weird, over-the-top reaction to two people who were not hurting anybody else. As David Plotz of Slate once wrote, that's like responding to the 9-11 attacks by invading Iraq. You got the wrong people! Anyway, now Moses has to murder that woman's entire tribe because God holds grudges. And we're all just gonna ignore how Moses himself is married to a Midianite woman, Zipporah. Unless you think he's going after the Midianites to make sure everyone knows whose side he's really on. <laughs> oh sure, I'm married to one of them, but I'm still with you guys. So Moses said to the people, Arm some of your men to go to war against the Midianites, so that they may carry out the Lord's vengeance on them. Send into battle a thousand men from each of the tribes of Israel. So twelve thousand men armed for battle. A thousand from each tribe were supplied from the clans of Israel. Moses sent them into battle, a thousand from each tribe, along with Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, who took with him articles from the sanctuary and the trumpets for signaling. Twelve thousand dudes are about to go to war for no reason other than God hates another group of people. Which also describes how politics works in the South. And of course we're sending Phineas. He's the guy who stabbed the couple I just talked about. No one knows how to kill Midianites more than that guy. They fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man. Among their victims were Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. The Israelites captured the Midianite women and children and took all the Midianite herds, flocks, and goods as plunder. They burned all the towns where the Midianites had settled, as well as all their camps. They took all the plunder and spoils, including the people and animals, and brought the captives, spoils, and plunder to Moses and Eleazar the priest and the Israelite assembly at their camp on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Jesus. So they killed all the men, kidnapped the women and children, stole everything those people owned, and burned their homes and property. Just like that. No casualties either. We just enslaved an entire tribe and it's just treated as a victory rather than as a genocide. The Bible was written by the same conservatives who try to downplay our country's racist past because it might make their voters feel bad about themselves. And why did we kill Balaam? He was the guy from the talking donkey from Shrek who didn't want to curse Israel and channeled God's message to Balak. We liked him. Oh, right, false gods and divination or something. He had to go. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds who returned from the battle. Good, he should be angry. How dare those people loot and pillage this village and kidnap innocent people? 
Finally, Moses is going to let them have it because he's the voice of morality and reason and authority. Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked them. They were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the Peor incident so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Now kill all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man. But save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. Holy crap. Moses is mad because his people allowed women and children to live. And Moses wants the non-virgin women and boys to be massacred. And then the rest of the women get to be prizes for the Israelites. And come on. All the women did not entice the Israelites to be unfaithful. Maybe a few did, but not all of them. And save every virgin girl? Why? What are you going to do? I swear, if this passage appeared in the Quran, every conservative you know would never stop talking about it. Anyone who has killed someone, or touched someone who was killed, must stay outside the camp seven days. On the third and seventh days, you must purify yourselves and your captives. Purify every garment, as well as everything made of leather, goat hair, or wood. Oh, sure. Right now, the thing to worry about is the purity of the murders. But no problem. All they have to do is stand over there for a week and purify their leather jackets. Problem solved. Now you may all get back to stealing a virgin woman's innocence. Then Eleazar the priest said to the soldiers who had gone into battle, This is what is required by the law that the Lord gave Moses. Gold, silver, bronze, Iron, tin, lead, and anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire, and then it will be clean. But it must also be purified with the water of cleansing, and whatever cannot withstand fire must be put through that water. On the seventh day, wash your clothes, and you will be clean. Then you may come into the camp. I see no one here cares about the virgin women or little girls, just the money. Gotta save the valuables and make sure they're clean. That passage perfectly describes every televangelist and evangelical megachurch pastor. You know, who cares about the women? Just make sure the check's clear. But the real question is, once they clean the goods, how will they divide it up? Will all the Israelites get an equal cut? No, not a chance. You know the priests and their buddies will take more than they deserve because this is a religion. The Lord said to Moses, You and Eleazar the priest and the family heads of the community are to count all the people and animals that were captured. Divide the spoils equally between the soldiers who took part in the battle and the rest of the community. From the soldiers who fought in the battle, set apart as tribute for the Lord one out of every 500, whether people, cattle, donkeys, or sheep. Take this tribute from their half share and give it to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part. From the Israelites' half, select one out of every fifty, whether people, cattle, donkeys, sheep, or other animals. Give them to the Levites, who are responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. What are the priests and Levites going to do with their share of people? And by people, let's be clear, we're talking about virgin women. And why does the priest get any cut? He didn't fight. He deserves nothing. And I don't like that these people are being used as tributes for the Lord, because that suggests they're just going to be slaughtered. The plunder remaining from the spoils that the soldiers took was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 women who had never slept with a man. 32,000 virgins. They kidnapped 32,000 girls and virgin adults. How is this not a bigger crime? Also, 72,000 cattle? Who the hell has to clean up that mess? It's gotta smell horrible in this place. That is an aroma unpleasing to the Lord. 
and for there to be 32,000 virgins still around suggests that hundreds of thousands of men, non-virgin women, and boys were murdered. But as we're going to find out in a few more lines, not a single Israelite was killed. How is that possible? <laughs> what sort of pathetic war was this that led to total domination by one side? Because there are no nuclear bombs, they were presumably fighting with swords, how are there no casualties for one side? The half share of those who fought in the battle was 337,500 sheep, of which the tribute for the Lord was 675, 36,000 cattle, of which the tribute for the Lord was 72, 30,500 donkeys, of which the tribute for the Lord was 61, 16,000 people, of whom the tribute for the Lord was 32. Moses gave the tribute to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part, as the Lord commanded Moses. We just did math to divvy up slaves. I just want to make clear what's in the Bible. God needed his cut of the slaves, which he obtained because his army murdered a bunch of men and boys and women who had sex. What the hell is God or his servant going to do with 32 virgins? Do I want to know? I mean, I think the best case scenario is also the worst case scenario, which is that God's just going to kill them as a sacrifice. The half belonging to the Israelites, which Moses set apart from that of the fighting men, the community's half, was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 people. From the Israelites' half, Moses selected one out of every 50 people and animals, as the Lord commanded him, and gave them to the Levites, who were responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. Sure. Why not? God wants to take some attention off himself for all the murder and slavery, so he's making sure others get some of the loot and humans as well. Then the officers who were over the units of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, went to Moses and said to him, Your servants have counted the soldiers under our command, and not one is missing. So we have brought as an offering to the Lord the gold articles each of us acquired, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, and necklaces, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. If I have that right, the officers said there were no casualties, which means they did a great job, but they're giving God some of the loot they acquired as a form of apology for doing exactly what God wanted them to do. Something is very wrong about that. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted from them the gold, all the crafted articles, all the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds that Moses and Eleazar presented as a gift to the Lord weighed 16,750 shekels. Each soldier had taken plunder for himself. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord. I can't believe all these people were just slaughtered and were in the middle of describing how much money Moses and Eleazar are taking on behalf of God. It is clear where the Bible's priorities lie. What the hell did we just read? There was a massacre at the beginning of this chapter, and families torn apart, and generations of property just stolen, and we spent a good chunk of this chapter talking about how the killers were dividing up their prizes while making sure God got his cut. This is like watching a heist movie and cheering for the criminals. Except there's way more violence and death and immorality in the Bible. 